Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video in the introduction to the finite element method in which we are going to be talking about chapter 8 the development of the linear strain triangle and we are following the book a first course in the finite element method by Daryl and Logan. In today's video we are going to go through an example where we try to partially derive the stiffness matrix of a linear strain triangle. I'm saying partially because, spoiler, we are not going to entirely derive the stiffness matrix. Neither me nor the reference does that, and I will tell you about my thoughts why this happens during the video. So with that being said, and without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, so the triangle we have here is a right angle triangle whose base is 5 and its height is 4. Of course, you have your traditional three nodes, node 1, 2, 3 on the corners, and you have nodes 4, 5, 6 in the center point of each of those lines. Now, what is my game plan? My game plan is to find force equals the stiffness matrix multiplied by the displacement, and to do that, I need to find the strain, which I multiply by the material matrix to find the stresses, which are triple integrate to find the forces. This is my game plan, basically. Now to do that, I need to find my displacement, which is needs to define my displacement my displacement function. Now, a quick reminder is that this displacement function has been explained in a previous video. I will be linking in the top right, and this is based on Pascal's triangles. Check out the previous video if you want to have more details. Now, I want to replace the A's with the degrees of freedom U1, U2, and so on, until U6. To do that, I need to plug in the coordinates of node number 1, because at node number 1, I know I have the displacement U1. And at node number 2, I have the displacement U2, and so on. You can see me doing this just right here. If you plug in the coordinates of node number 1, which are 0, 0, then the only thing that survives of this equation is A1. And you can see me writing U1, which is the movement at the node number 1, in dx equals A1. For example, U2, which is the movement at node number 2, will equal U of the coordinates of node number 2, which are 5 and 0. If you try to plug this in here, you have A1, you have a 5 here. You have nothing here because 0, you have 25 here, you have nothing here because 0, and nothing here because 0, so you can see me writing this just fine here. This happens multiple times for u's, and should happen similarly for v's. The equations would be the same, but here I would have v's instead of u's. Solving those by magic, or by MATLAB, I'm not sure about the first, but I'm pretty sure about the later, by solving and using MATLAB, you can find the A's as functions in U. The easiest one is A1, because A1, as you can see here, equals U1, but the rest you don't know, so MATLAB helps you on that. So, okay, I have my A's as functions of U's, and here I want to immediately tell you, don't get excited. You see, usually YouTubers try to go viral by faking emotions and faking reactions, and so you look at that, this is very interesting. And look at those amazing functions. I am being the exact opposite. It's basically part of CE's philosophy to be ice cold honest when need be. I want to tell you not to be excited in this entire video because everything you see here is based on this triangle. It is shape specific. It's not coordinate specific because you could assume B and you could assume H and replace B and H instead of 25. But it's shape specific because if you change the triangle to say something like this, then those coordinates change, which will lead to a huge change here. So take everything with a massive grain of salt. Of course, since I'm telling you that this is kind of not exciting, I still urge you to watch on because it helps increase some YouTube analytics that helps increase the viewability of this video. Anyway, don't get excited a lot, and I will keep pushing your excitement down whenever I feel that you might get excited. Because, yeah, ice cold honesty. So, I have my A's, I can plug them back into my U. Because remember, my goal is to write NI UI in the summation. Because U should equal the mixing functions N1, U1, N2, U, U2, N3, U3, and so on. How can I find that? 
Well, I have to plug in all the A's and then try to find the factors of U1, U2, U3, and so on. You can see me doing that here, and by magic of mathematics once again, and it was a nightmare to find out, to be honest, I got this. Now, I will save the mathematical mumbo-jumbo, because once again, don't, exci don't get excited. Whatever you see here is applicable for that dude. So all this work was semi in vain. But I had to show you this. You see, this video is good for principles, for concepts. It might not hold a lot of applicability, but I want the concepts here to be, to be ready. So n1 is everything multiplied by u1, n2 is everything multiplied by u2, and so on. I want to show you how n4 was found because n4 is the simplest of them. Now, n4 is the coefficient that gets multiplied by u4. So if you look at those, the only place where you say u4 is here. u4 is seen with a5, which is multiplied by xi. So taking the u4 out, you would have 4 multiplied by u4 divided by 20 multiplied by xy, and if you're wondering why xy, it's because of this. So the coefficient of u4 is 4xy over 20, which you see here. Now this brain trick is for this coefficient alone, so imagine what you would do to find n1. I will leave it for you, although I encourage against doing that because it's problem specific, so your, um, your effort might go in vain. Anyway, why do I need the shape functions? Because I want to find the strain. To find the strain, I need to partial derive to x to find strain x, partial derive v to y to find strain y, and cross partial derive to find the shear stress. I tried partial deriving the shape functions myself, but it's very late at night, so please double check my partial derivations. And once again, don't get excited. Everything you see here is shape related, it will not help you. If the shape changes. Anyway, those are the partial derivatives because you need them to formulate your B matrix. What is the B matrix? The B matrix is what you multiply by the D matrix or degrees of freedom matrix. This is called the D. Now, it's not the D matrix, it's the D vector, to be honest. The D vector multiplied by the B matrix gives you the strain vector, epsilon. You need this because you're going to multiply this in the future by D to find stresses. Now, the B matrix is the matrix of partial derivatives. So, partial n to x with u1, partial n to x with u2, partial n3x to u3, and so on. You would think, wait a minute, what about v1, v2, and v3? Well, in partial u to x, they don't exist, and that's why I have a zero here. But in partial v to y, that exists, so you have a value here. So, yeah. You can basically find that. Now, there is a problem here. The problem is that those partial derivatives are not constant. Those are equations. You know why this is a problem? This is a problem because you have to somehow triple integrate that thing. Before I continue, the partial derivatives here are functions in x. Now, this is different in the constant strain triangle where the partial derivatives are numbers because of the name constant strain triangle. If you have missed that out, here is a link on the top right to that video where I explain the constant strain triangle. Without, without further ado, let's continue here. Now here you would have to triple integrate. Let me just open it here. And this is where the book actually bails out. You see, this is, in, uh, this is an inhuman, insurmountable task. Because B is a matrix of, I think, uh, 24 or 12 by 3. And it's a matrix of functions, of expressions, not of numbers. This is, a, this is a matrix of numbers, and this is a matrix of expressions. So you as a human would have to multiply expressions transposed by numbers, by expressions in matrix form. And once you survive that, you have to triple integrate that guy once to x, once to y, and once to z. Now at least the integration in z is something you don't need to care about because you can find it as a thickness if the thickness is constant, but it's not easy nonetheless. Now here, you could use a cool method in MATLAB called SIMS 
back in the day, this is something I used. It opens the symbolic math toolbox if you have it available on MATLAB. And it's really amazing because you see, regular computers are only able to numerically integrate, but to integrate expressions, MATLAB allows you with a symbolic math to do that. This is a very powerful tool I used a lot. Like you can manipulate, you can multiply function by function as expressions, and it's really, really cool. You should give it a try. Anyway, this is where I told you the spoiler that it bails out, and I think you know why. Because it's an inhumane task that only achieves the stiffness matrix of this particular element. If you change the orientation, then everything what you get here is incorrect. Now, Jerry and Logan's book actually gives you a reference. You might check that out. It might be interesting for you, but for me, it's not because I already see the future. I have been uh, preparing for the isoparametric formulation since ages. The isoparametric formulation is a cool way of standardizing the stiffness matrix, whatever the shape is. That's something we'll be talking about very soon. So that's the end of this rather short video. So I hope that you enjoyed it, which means basically that's everything I wanted to talk about, and I hope that you enjoyed the video. Of course, before I finish, I want to give a huge grain of salt sized shout out to our dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen right now. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as their support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with those videos on time, hopefully, and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. Now I hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. Of course if you have enjoyed the video then please like, comment, share, subscribe and so on as a sacrifice to the YouTube algorithm, especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.